is a judge no, found that you no, carried out right. unnecessary no, no, treatment no, no. That's not right. on no. a 78 year old woman. No, no, woman. it's only on a little part you're writing. That's not right. That's true. That's wrong. All That's right, false. Okay. That's false. Thank okay. you. Jasmine White is no longer registered as a dentist in New South Wales or Queensland. With all the rain we've had in WA in the past few weeks, water shortages mightn't be at the forefront of our minds, but experts are warning us not to be complacent. Natalie Bongiolo explains why scientists are still working around the clock to drought-proof Perth. It's hard for people to visualise what's happening with groundwater, which is literally just under our feet. Okay, so that's at the water table level right there. This is a window into our most precious resource. It's an amazing sight our state doesn't often see. The last time Wellington Dam overflowed like this was back in 2009. Tipped over the edge by our wettest September in 40 years. So you'd think with all that rainfall, we'd have plenty of water. Over time, there has been less and less water getting into the ground. A scientist with the Department of Water, Dr Sandy McHugh, says monitoring our biggest water resource is a massive scientific mission. We're using the world's best science to understand what's happening with our groundwater. Imagine Perth is built over a great big bucket. It's called the Nangara Mound, an ancient reservoir that's made up of hundreds of metres of rocks and sand. When rain falls onto the ground, it infiltrates the mound, filling the spaces. It holds hundreds and hundreds of gigalitres in storage, so the water that's held in those poor spaces. This is the water we drink. The groundwater in the Nangara Mound is the best water we have. It's the cleanest water we have. But scientists are concerned water levels in the mound are dropping. Are there many of these measuring stations around Perth? Yes, we've got over 300 monitoring bores all over the Nangara Mound. Here at Lake Gulalo, north of Perth, is a window into the enormous well beneath us. You'll be able to see the pipe that goes down into the, into the aquifer and through, it's through that that we measure the level of the groundwater beneath the, beneath the surface. A tape measure is lowered into the pipe until it touches water. Oh, OK. So our reading is 2.75 metres. OK, and so what does that mean? That means that the top of the water table, so the top of our groundwater, is 2.75 metres Below. from the surface. The data from hundreds of bores like these are then sent back to the department. We have an almost continuous record of how the water level goes up and how the water level goes down. Using graphic modelling, they can see inside our most precious resource and it paints a grim picture. On average, water levels on the Nangara Mound have reduced about 180 centimetres. Doesn't sound much, but think of it this way. Over the past 20 years, the water level has dropped by 500 gigalitres. One gigalitre is roughly enough to fill Patterson Stadium to the goalpost. So we're talking 500 ovals full of water. We rely on good winter rains to infiltrate through into the ground and replenish the groundwater. Despite our wet September, June was the driest ever on record. And in recent decades, it's become a trend. Since about the mid-1970s, those patterns have changed and we're getting less rainfall in wintertime. So that's 40 years of less rainfall every year. How much less? In the past 10 years, the long-term average has dropped from 800 millimetres a year to 650. When you have year after year of less rainfall, that's where, that's where we talk about a drying climate. And if we're going to keep delivering to the growing population, uh, we need to ensure we have good uh, climate independent sources of water. Minister for Water Terry Redmond believes recycling our wastewater is one answer. This system's incredibly complex. Here at Beanyard Wastewater Treatment Plant, they're cleaning our dirty water. And I think people are smart enough now to know that it just doesn't go straight from the toilet to the tap. Natalie, this is the raw wastewater. This is the water that comes from your showers and your toilets from industry. The Water Corp's Nick Turner agrees at this stage, it's yuck. Highly nasty stuff. After its first treatment, it looks like this. This is the treated wastewater, okay, that currently we discharge to ocean, so it's way cleaner, had um, a lot of the bugs taken out of it and the chemicals, but still no way would you be drinking it. And this is what it looks like once it's been through the treatment plant. Um, this is the stuff that's drinking water standard, and as a comparison, this is standard tap water. They this, look the same. They are the same. 
So can they guarantee it's safe? I think it's a bit scary when, when people think about it, and one of the reasons for having this trial was to expose people to the science. Using advanced technology, the wastewater goes through several screening processes and ultrafiltration to remove anything larger than one three hundredth width of a human hair. It's then subject to reverse osmosis and ultraviolet light to destroy any bacteria. This is what's come out of the plant, highly treated water. It looks crystal clear. So you've drunk this? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Absolutely. All right. I'll, ha I'll have a try. Here's your chance. Tastes like water. But it will be another 20 or 30 years before you get to taste it. The water from this tap is now injected into our ancient underground aquifer. It'll stay there for a number of decades before it gets to a point where it gets drawn out. With scientists expecting our drying climate to continue, they believe it's one way to help balance how much goes in with how much comes out. It's really important that we build diversity in our water, in our water supply. So desalination plants and groundwater replenishment are really sensible ways of drought-proofing Perth. And that information is on our website. Natalie Bonjola with that report. Here's what's next. How an internet romance almost landed a trusting boyfriend in jail. She just turned around and said, oh, I want to get to know you, have a relationship with you.